So today I'm going to be showing you guys a few recipes that I like to meal prep. So our meal prep menu is going to consist of pancakes, rice, roasted veggies, Indian curry, and taco flavored lentils. So the first thing that I like to do when I start meal prepping is get my oven turned on because I'm always cutting up something. I have something on the stove and something in the oven. The key to being efficient when you're meal prepping is to be continuously doing something. So I am setting my oven to 425 and we are going to roast up some veggies. This could be anything. Typically I like to do root veg vegetables, so like potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots. Today I'm gonna be roasting up broccoli and butternut squash. And all I do for this is I chop them up, drizzle them in a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of um, Himalayan sea salt, and then toss them in the oven at 425. I did put them on separate sheet pans just because the broccoli I know for sure will be done before the squash is. So you just kind of have to keep cooking temperatures in mind but essentially you could probably put any vegetables and mix them together. If they're a little overdone, I'm sure they'll still be delicious. Do picky eaters like this broccoli? Let me, yes. Yes, let I me see. It. Let me see. So picky eaters like this broccoli? Yeah. I will probably get my rice going next, so that way that'll kind of just be out of the way because it doesn't cause a lot of prep. The only thing that I am gonna mention about my rice today is the ratio. So when I make rice, I do a one to one ratio. This meaning two cups of rice, two cups of water. And then what I do is after you bring your water to a boil, you add your rice, you put your lid on, turn it down just like you would normal rice, put your timer on for about 18 to 20 minutes. And then when it's done, leave the lid on for an additional 10 minutes and the rice, the rice doesn't get overcooked and mushy. You have a really nice grain rice that's perfect for making like stir fried rice. If you ever had um, like takeout Chinese and you just love the texture of the rice or even um, takeout Japanese, the rice is like more sticky and has more of a bite to it. It's because it's not overly cooked. So one to one ratio on the rice. That's my only advice for the rice. Advice for rice. Another staple that we keep in our house that usually ends up being like a meal prep type thing for us is peanut butter. I am not gonna be showing that today. I actually showed that in my last video, which was five of our weeknight meals. So if you're interested in seeing how I make our homemade peanut butter, click it right here. I never know what side, I cannot remember. I have to figure this out. Okay, and for good sources of protein, I typically will do either a pot of beans, which would be like a pot of like red beans, like kidney beans, or I'll do some garbanzo beans, or um, the kids love split pea soup, or um, even black eyed peas. Today I'm gonna be making lentil taco meat. This lentil recipe has to be the easiest one I've ever made. You literally let, add all your ingredients to a pot, bring it to a simmer over like medium to medium high heat, and you literally just let it cook until all of the liquid is absorbed by the lentils. And this will take about 20-ish minutes, depending on how, how high you have your heat but I love these lentils. I will have the full recipe for the seasoning blend that I used and how I made these ones. They'll be linked in the description below. I've had a lot of people asking for my recipes, but if you are interested in the recipes, if you look below my video, you'll see a little diamond. Click the diamond and scroll down. You'll see all the notes from this video to include other videos that I've tagged and all of the recipes. The next recipe that I'm going to share with you is my pancake recipe. I have been working on this forever and I have finally perfected a vegan pancake that actually has a third of the amount of flour in it. So let's get into the pancake recipe. So the ingredients needed are oats, um, or you could buy pre-prepared oat flour. You're going to need all-purpose flour, some baking powder, not baking soda. At one point in this recipe, I wrote soda, I meant baking powder. I am using Himalayan sea salt. It adds some extra minerals instead of just using regular salt. And then we are going to be using aquafaba, which is the chickpea juice from a can of garbanzo beans. If you are not familiar with aquafaba, I actually have a whole video on some of the uses of aquafaba. I will have that linked above and below. Make sure you watch that. And then you are also going to need some almond milk. The first step to making these pancakes is to actually make your oat flour. Or like I said, if you already have 
if you've purchased oat flour, just ignore this part. But I use steel cut oats. I like using steel cut oats because in my opinion, they are the least processed of the oats. So I am going to add my steel cut oats straight to the blender and I'm just gonna turn it on high. I do have a high powered blender. I have a Vitamix. So I'm not sure that every blender can do this. If it won't, like I said, just go back to buying um, oat flour, okay? So I have my, I have made my oat flour. The next thing that I'm going to do is just add all the remaining ingredients. I don't actually have a specific amount for the almond milk, so I'm just going to slowly add this. You also don't want to overmix this. So as soon as you see that it has a good consistency, you wanna turn it off. Sometimes I even will have a little bit of tiny little um, like, flour like balls inside where it like completely didn't mix but that's totally fine like you're better off that way if you over mix it they're not going to be fluffy you're not going to have those little holes on the center where the air catches you're just going to have really like tough rubbery pancakes it's not a good thing so make sure to not over mix it then you're just going to add just a tiny bit of coconut oil to the bottom of a pan or if you have a what do you call those things? Those flat top things that you cook pancakes on? I don't even, I can't remember what they're called, but just go ahead and cook your pancakes as you would normally cook them. And when they start to get bubbly, you flip them. I love this pancake recipe because it honestly, it cuts down on the fat that's in it because most pancake batters actually have oil or butter added directly into the mixture. We do not do that and they're, it, they are completely cholesterol free, free because we're not using egg as well. And they, the aquafaba for some reason makes the outside edge really crispy. So you have this nice crispy edge. And then something that I personally like to do is I like to like a little bit undercook my pancakes and it's safe to do that because there's no egg so you're not gonna get salad vanilla poisoning. Those are my pancakes. I like to, I'll let them completely cool and I honestly just leave them out on the counter to do this. I don't even bother putting them in the fridge first. Once they've come to room temperature, I will put them in a bag or sometimes I even use like an old spinach container or something and I just pop them into the freezer. And we will use these throughout the week. Just um, pop, put them in the toaster. Sometimes I have to put them down twice but they're really quick, convenient, and a better option for a quick breakfast. So those are my pancakes. My favorite way to eat pancakes <laughs> with a fork. <laughs> And so the last recipe that I'm gonna be going over with you guys is my Indian curry. This is, I make this a little bit different and it varies just about every time. But to me, this was a really quick, easy and delicious way to make it. The first thing you're gonna do is saute your garlic, your onion and your ginger all together in a little bit of olive oil. I blended my garlic, ginger and onion into like a paste. But if I was to do this again, because I am throwing the, the, all the sauce into a blender at the end anyway, I would not have done that. So anyway, just pretend that the onions, garlic, and the ginger are all just like coarsely chopped up, okay? So add all of those to a pan with a little bit of olive oil. Get them like a nice golden caramel color. And then you're gonna add in a pint of cherry tomatoes. And you're just gonna let these, oh, and you're gonna add in a little bit of water. I think I had like a half a cup of water. Um, and all you're gonna do is let the cherry tomatoes kind of like burst. If they're taking a while, you can just take a potato masher or something, but be careful because they will like explode in your face. So be careful when you go to pop these. But anyway, you're just gonna let these simmer until it gets nice and thick and it's gonna really bring out the sweetness and the tomatoes and it's gonna be really delicious. At this point, then you're gonna add in tomato paste. You're gonna add in your curry powder. I love this curry powder. It is my favorite. Make sure you try this brand. I love this brand. Anyway, you'll add in your curry powder and then your salt as well. And you're just gonna let this simmer. Again, this is another way of building the flavor. You're gonna want that those spices to bloom. Per, that's like a term for like awakening the spices and like bringing them back to life, rehydrating them, however you wanna say it. You're gonna let them just sit there and simmer for a little while. And also you're gonna let that tomato paste kind of caramelize up a little bit 
Once that's nice and creamy and delicious, then you will add in your coconut milk, your can of coconut milk. And then we're gonna just throw this whole mixture into the blender. I decided to do this last minute because I just had this really vivid memory of going to a local Indian restaurant and I just remember their curries being so smooth and like velvety. So I was like, I'm gonna throw it in the blender. So I did and it was definitely the right decision. So throw it all in the blender, then you can add it back to whatever pot you were originally cooking it in and then add in your veggies. And at that point, just let it simmer until your vegetables are tender or to whatever consistency you like. So that's it. It's a really easy recipe. This can be served up with some jasmine rice. We did make jasmine rice in our meal prep, so I actually went ahead and put aside a portion for Frankie for lunch tomorrow. So this is a really great recipe to reheat as well. So if you're looking for something that will last a good three days in the fridge and work as either a lunch or din dinner or both, this is a really great recipe. Keep in mind that you can use any vegetables you want. If I would have had cauliflower, I for sure would have put that in there. Potatoes would be great in here. Peas would be great in this. Um, and I actually kind of wish I would have put in some either gar garbanzo beans or something for some extra protein. Tofu would be great in this. Um, really just experiment. The main thing I would say is really focusing on building those flavors and I think getting your sauce really velvety really changed the game for me today so and the curry powder make sure you have a good quality curry powders thank you for watching my meal prep Monday the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this video is time efficiency so whenever you get ready to start meal prepping look and plan and make sure that you always have something in the oven always have something on the stove and you always have something on your cutting board Keep your area clean, stay organized, and you will have the most success with meal prepping. If you could do something for me and leave a comment below, let me know what you enjoyed from today. Or if you have any questions about eating plant-based, getting your kids to eat plant-based, any kind of videos that you would like to see, your input is what really helps me to determine what my next video is going to be or what content you guys are actually interested in. So leave me a comment and make sure to subscribe so that you can see my future videos. Put the bell on so you'll be notified when those videos load. And just make sure you're joining me every week. Thank you so much for your time and go meal prep.